We're going to have some fun today, shall we? The last time I did this for all the NHL logos, I didn't do much research about the logos and their design. Because I don't care. Drawing penises with my paintbrush is much funner. The great thing about the NFL is that many of their logos have remained unchanged for the most part, but the shield itself was changed just a few years ago when they decreased the number of stars from 12 to 8. I forget what the reasoning behind that was. Probably Goodell wanted to save some money. Each star was worth about 500 k So here is my critique of all 32 NFL logos, including that dumpster fire of a logo, the LA Chargers, that just came out. I'll get to that later. Also, please pray for me as Goodell and his thugs might come after me if I mention the word Super Bowl in this video. Super Bowl! Miami Dolphins. This is a classic logo as you have Snowflake jumping through a hoop in that classic teal and orange color scheme that defines pretty much all of South Florida. My question is why does the dolphin have a freaking helmet on? It's jumping through a hoop in a pool that dangerous? So, okay, so you're going to tell me that it's a football helmet. Where the hell is this dolphin going to hold a football? I mean, he's a dolphin. Dolphins don't play football. Quit acting like they do. I guess they can kick field goals though. Next we have my team, the New York Football Giants. This logo has been around forever. It's a very organized logo. If you turn it upside down and add an H onto the end of it, it spells huh, which I imagine is what Eli Manning says after every pick he throws. That and all shucks. He does have two Super Bowl MVPs. Suck it. Now on to the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, the Las Vegas Raiders. Wait a second, how awesome is that going to be to have an NFL franchise in Vegas? What I don't get is how the gambling is gonna work on that. Typically, they don't take action on local teams in Vegas, but do you think the casinos are gonna give up 1 16th of their revenue a week? I get that they, have more pe they will have more people in town, so it'll probably be a wash, but what if they make it to the Super Bowl? Someone who knows about gambling answer that for me. Anyways, this logo has always been weird to me. It's obviously a one-eyed man with swords and a football helmet on. Let me tell you, having one eye and playing football isn't exactly a recipe for success. You can look tough all you want, but if you can only see out of one eye, you can't play no football. Try it now. Close your left eye. See all you miss having one eye? And swords, are you gonna cut a bitch out on the football field? Oh, never mind. that's what happens in the stands. You know it's bad when you leave Oakland for Vegas. All right, another iconic logo, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know why this logo is so awesome. It's so simple and aesthetic. The three star thingies are a tribute to the three rivers in Pittsburgh and also the steel industry. And the colors are yellow and red for Heinz ketchup and mustard. That's not true, but you totally fell for it. Now we have a solid, well-designed logo, the New York Jets. So in the NFL, teams are either named after a type of person or an animal, but the Jets are the only team in the league named after an inanimate object, and that perfectly describes the way they have played lately. Stop the movie. I know this was a while ago, but let's examine the butt fumble, shall we? Even the NFL itself calls this play one of the worst plays in the history of the NFL ever. There are many places to run on a football field. I'm going to go ahead and say running into your teammate's fat ass is not one of the places you want to go. And then having the ball become dislodged from your grips directly from said ass. And then having it run back for a touchdown? It's all too much. The only thing that could have gone worse for Sanchez is if he got his head stuck in his lineman's bunghole. Hey, don't laugh. My uncle died that way. Now, as I said before, the NFL has a lot of animals in it for some reason. In fact, 15 out of the 32 teams are named after an animal, with 11 of those being named after a bird, a cat, or a horse. I'm going to start the animal section out with the Arizona Cardinals, who used to be the St. Louis Cardinals, and they both played in St. Louis at the same time, which was confusing as hell. Also not a wildlife expert at all, but I've been to Phoenix a few times and I didn't really see many cardinals. What I did see was my eyeballs frying for the 112 degree heat. The logo itself is great. The cardinal looks all mean and stuff. I guess that's why they kept the cardinal name even though it makes no sense because I get they were too lazy to change the logo. Now we have what I think is one of the best damn logos in the league, even though I cannot stand this team because I am a Giants fan, and I mean, you know who we hate the most. 
And despite that, I will say this is probably the best logo in the league hands down. The eagle has depth and shadow, and if you look at the right side of it, the feathers make an E for E-A-G-L-E-S. And if you zoom in on the eye, it forms a zero, which is how many Super Bowl championships the Eagles have. Oh yeah, I went there. Speaking of no Super Bowls, we now have the Detroit Lions, which to me looks like Panthro playing with string. Watch me back click, then shoot ya. Not really much hidden meaning here. I honestly think someday the Lions will at least get to a Super Bowl. If someday is the year 23-10. hey -o. Another NFL bird are the Seattle Seahawks, which to me just look like the eagle from the Muppets, and they made him their logo. I guess if you look hard enough, there is a suggestion of an S in the logo, which stands for should have gave the ball to beast mode. On to the, one of the feline logos the Jacksonville Jaguars, which to me resembles a cat with peanuts balanced on its head. I like how the tongue is sticking out on the cat and it's obviously got drunk and fell asleep and got teabagged from, by Mac. Speaking of teabaggers, the New England Patriots are next. This logo is okay, but I've always wondered what the logo thing is on the field. It's like a razor for Gillette and a bridge or something. And it's not like anyone explains it. Hold on, let me Google it. Oh, apparently it's a bridge and a lighthouse. Add in a deflated football and a video camera, you'll have everything these guys are all about. Back to animals, the Cincinnati Bengals have a very cool logo. What I want to know is where are all these damn tigers located in America? I mean, you have the Auburn Tigers, the LSU Tigers, the damn Clemson Tigers, the Missouri Tigers, and the Cincinnati Bagel, bang, Bagels, and the Cincinnati Bengals. It's not like you see tigers roaming around the Midwest straight up eating people. There's nothing, there is more of a chance of seeing a cardinal in Arizona than seeing a dang tiger in any one of those states. Unless you go to the zoo, which Cincinnati is quite known for. I'm lobbying for a new lo logo, the Cincinnati Harambes. Someone set up a Kickstarter, stat. Now let's go through the horse logos. We got the Denver Broncos and the Indianapolis Colts, two way different logos. One has a wizard in it, about to cast a fireball at a bitch, and the other is a horseshoe, which is a C on its side, but it could be a U, then they'd be the Indianapolis Colts, and that would just be stupid. Fitting their logo is a logo associated with good luck, and that's their QB's name. Is it just me, or if Andrew Luck didn't play sports, he would be a wicked dungeon master slash virgin. Now back to human beings, we got the Vikings. This logo is probably the best logo to have as a costume because I doubt anyone wants to dress up like a St. Louis Ram. Clearly this is a bearded white man with the, and the horns look like a V and the dude has a mean, mean stash. On to the Buffalo Bills, which to me is funny because the name, the team is named after Buffalo Bill, an actual guy. So basically if your name isn't Bill, you can't be on the team which is not true, anyone can be on the team. You'll just have to enjoy losing games in awful weather. And of course, bring your dildo to the game day. And yep, let's update that logo, shall we? The Saints is the fleur de lis, essentially a lotus flower which symbolizes French royalty. Though to me, it's always looked like a jet plane. <sighs> You like that sound effect, huh? Here we have two logos I consider to be very similar as they kind of came out at the same time. The Houston Texas, Texans and the Tennessee Titans. The Texans logo is a T and it looks like a mean bull charging at you. If you look at the negative space, it looks like a bladder, which is what Brock Osweiler cannot control whenever he feels pressure in the pocket. The Titans is also a T but that is on fire, but it's blue fire. The T looks like a nail or a thumbtack. The whole thing could be a comet, but it has nothing to do with Titans. Titans are just big people. Big people you are supposed to remember. The Redskins, the most controversial logo in all of sports, period. I don't have to feel bad about using this image because this logo isn't even trademarked. It is well drawn and a great representation of an Afri of an American Indian who looks sad because people stole his land, started playing football in it, and used his image on their helmet and attached an antiquated derogatory term to said logo. 
But hey, feathers. In Green Bay, we have the Packers and a G that is green and it looks compacted. Done. Kansas City is nice. We obviously have the KC, and I like the Arrowhead outline, which is a shout-out to Arrowhead Stadium. I mean, this logo and team name seems like a fitting tribute to American Indians versus the Redskins, and I still doesn't make up for that whole stealing of the land and Trail of Tears shit, right? But hey, casinos. Back to birds. We got the Ravens, Nevermore. What I love about the Ravens is that they are named after a drunk poet's poem, and that drunk poet was kind of a major asshole in the fact that he died because he got so amazingly drunk, he passed out in the street and died of exposure. That, and he probably pissed enough people off for them to not care and check on him. He did write The Cask of Amontillado, which is one of dope-ass story about how this dude gets pissed off at this other dude and walls his ass into a cellar after he knocks him out. I don't know why I like that story so much, but when I bring it up at dinner parties, people tend to stop talking to me after that, which is absolutely my goal. Only a few left to go, the good old Buccaneers. This updated one is way better than that gay pirate that they used to have with a knife in his mouth. Usually having a knife in your mouth makes you look super tough, but only if you are diving into a shipwreck and, ret and retrieving lost treasure. And why are so many teams named after pirates? Pirates are damn thieves and rapists. Oh wait, it's the NFL. I get it now. Aesthetically, the Falcons logo is the best out of all the logos. It's a bird that also makes the F for Falcons. See it? I saw plenty of these logos on my report card in school, I can tell you that, because I would be staring out the window or drawing giant dicks on my notebook. Super bad style. The Carolina Panthers, yes, an angry black cat. We get it, it has whiskers, and now the LA Rams, the team that keeps breaking up with one city, leaving it, and coming back like, sorry about that, you didn't throw away my CDs, did you? I'm sure this logo will get a nice makeover like the Chargers got. And yeah, this logo needs to be ridiculed. WTF, talk about taking shortcuts and pissing all over San Diego in the process. I don't get why you would move up the five to LA, when the reason all of San Diego exists is because people hate LA and they move south for a reason. And now we're going to have two teams with nearly identical colors and helmets in the same city fighting over which indifferent fans that show up 30 minutes late to a game to get to like their new team. There is a reason why there hadn't been a team in LA for 20 years. Good luck with that one. Headed up to NorCal, the 49ers. Very simple logo designed after a year where people headed out west to find gold, dysentery, and right before that, cannibalism. Almost done here. Let's go with the Bears, which if you look at all the animal logos in the NFL, and trust me, there are a lot of them, the Bears are named after one of the coolest animals ever, but their basic logo is a C. I mean, they don't they do have an alternative bear logo, but it looks like they just don't care, like their quarterback. Finally, we're at the Cowboys, which is a great logo. The only thing that I have against it is if you put this symbol on your car or a t-shirt you're wearing, it automatically makes you lose about 100 IQ points. Here's your Yankees hat, Warriors pullover, Man U sticker, Canadian hockey sweater, and Brazilian soccer jersey to complement your choice in fandom. I'm sure one of you will pipe up and tell me I'm a moron to go F myself to Cowboys rule and talk about all that crap with the Super Bowls you won 20 plus years ago. But just remember all the fun we had when these things happened. And yes, that was a catch. But seriously, F the Cowboys. And now for my last logo. Yeah, this pretty much says it all. It's a picture of a brown helmet. At least brown fans aren't delusional about their team because they can't be. Instead of bagging on them, here's a montage of Browns fans in agony. And for those of you that enjoy schadenfreude, well, you're just mean picking on these poor people. At least they have LeBron. Did you enjoy this? I hope so. Please like this video a lot so I can do it for baseball next. I'm Five Points Gaming, and you made it to the end of this video.